Hello, my friends. Welcome to MTD. I am here today with my friend Jake at Aceta, and we're going to talk a bit about automation and robotics, which Aceta is great at. Some of the world leaders, I believe. So we're going to learn a little bit from Jake today. Jake, what do we have going on here? So this is the Fastload CR2000. This is a standard product that we offer. It's great for um, loading and unloading machine tools, like lathes, mills. Um, and what you're seeing here is a demo that we have set up. And each of these pedestals is simulating a machine tool. So this system right here can load two machine tools at the same time. So purchasing one robotic system, you can send two machine tools, so you get a very good return on investment. Um, it use, uses a collaborative robot. Um, and the advantage of that is that you don't need fencing that you would need on a traditional robotic cell, and it helps keep that footprint a lot smaller. That's great information. I think you quickly touched on return on investments, which these days we're all looking on how quickly we can get our return, mm -hmm. right? And then on top of that, you said there's no cell around it. So if I was to bump into this, sure. I don't get injured, right? Yep, I'll show you how that... So it bumped into me right there. There are sensors in the robot that automatically stop it so it won't hurt anyone. And we have some bumpers around the tool to make sure there's no sharp edges if it bumps into someone. Um, and once it stops, press the resume button, and it carries on from where it left off. That is really simple. I like it, intelligent. I see that it's moving you know, at a, at a speed that's you know, reliable, obviously, and it's picking up its parts. Traditionally, the robots move much quicker, but they need fencing because, they, because of that speed makes it a little bit more dangerous. Is that sure. how that works? Yeah. We, uh, to comply with the safety regulations, the robot moves a little slower. However, um, on most systems, if the cycle time of the machine is long enough, the robot is doing this movement while the machine is machining parts. So the time that the machine is actually stopped is only actually a couple seconds from when the robot is waiting in front of the machine. The machine door will open, the robot will go in, unload the part, load the next part, come out, the door will close and then the machine can continue resuming while the robot is working in this area. That makes sense. So ultimately the spindle is still going regardless. We're exactly. still keeping that thing going. Even if this thing's moving a little bit, let's say at pace, mm -hmm. it's safe. It's obviously, you know, easy to restart if there's a mistake. Mm -hmm. The ROI is quick working on two machines and that spindle is constantly going. I like that a lot. Exactly. Is there, what would be one of the major benefits that you think why I would purchase a collaborative machine like this versus one of the more traditional uh, fenced in robots? Sure. Yeah. So the collaborative system helps keep the footprint really small. Um, you don't need to have a huge area in your machine shop. Um, so it's, it's very efficient in terms of space. And this system is designed to be very flexible as well. So these grid plates, um, we have six different grid plate sizes for different size parts. And we can also customize these plates for um, non-standard part shapes. So if you have a, a strange shape, we can, we can do a custom cutout. Um, and then in addition, the grid plate can go up and down for longer or shorter parts and the end of arm tool that you see here, mm -hmm. it has multiple finger positions. So if your part sizes change, the finger positions can be adjusted so that you can use the same end of arm tool with multiple parts in your shop. You guys really are flexible with this, with this collaborative robot. So if, if something changes, I've noticed, and we've talked about this in other shows as well, we've noticed that job batches are starting to be reduced just based on, let's go with automation industry, for example. Those batches are starting to be reduced. So the flexibility to switch from one job to exactly. another job adds to that ROI you were talking about because it's so easily to adapt. Exactly. Yeah, you don't need super high volume jobs. Uh, we've created a custom uh, touchscreen interface so that you don't have to be you know, a full robot programmer. All you have to do is enter the length, the height, and the part geometry and the robot will adjust the program to load the different parts into the machines without having to be, um, without having to make a new custom program. And, and ultimately, speaking with other people in this industry, robots are here to try and make our lives a little easier. Instead of me having to load all these parts by hand, exactly. this thing can run, you know, lights out if necessary. It can switch, you've made it convenient enough to switch from one job to another job. So ultimately, we're just trying to get this automation and are making our, our human lives a bit easier. Exactly. Well. Yep. And the, since it's collaborative, um, the operator can be unloading finished parts, 
loading in new raw parts while the robot is working. Right. So you don't need to actually stop the robot to load and unload and refresh the screen plate. The robot can always keep working because it's collaborative, so it can work alongside the operator. Well, I think you've just convinced me to start my own garage shop, and I'm going to have to have about two of these. <laughs> so we've talked a little bit about this set up here, but we have another setup behind me over here. Let's head over there and talk a little bit about this one. Sure. So we were looking at that collaborative robot just a minute ago, moving the parts around, but we have a different system here. How does this one work? So this is the Fastload CX-1000. It's a new standard product that we offer, and it's very similar to the CR-2000 in that it utilizes a collaborative robot. Um, however, this one is a little different. It's designed to be very maneuverable um, and flexible around the shop floor. So it's mounted on wheels, so you can pop the wheels up, and then you could push this system to a new machine on your floor. So you don't need a forklift or a pallet jack. It's very easy to move from one machine to another, and it's very easy to reprogram. I like that capability. Now, when you say very easy to reprogram, um, you are obviously the expert when it comes to this. What exactly does that mean for someone who's maybe a bit more of a beginner like myself? Sure. So the one of the advantages of this is that it uses hand-guided programming. So unlike a traditional teach pendant where you have to use the teach pendant and jog the robot from position to position, with this system, holding the, the touch screen, press in the enable button, and you can guide the robot from position to position by hands. And this is really easy to move, guys. I mean, as we know, when I do my gun show, I always say it's not about muscles because I don't have a lot of those. This thing is so easy to move. So all I'm doing, Jake, is taking this, and let's say that we have a machine spindle here, mm -hmm. and I place it here, and then I say, teach, or? So it's very easy to learn. It's a lot less intimidating than a traditional teach pendant. Um, it has a, a drag and drop touchscreen interface that allows you to, once the robot is in the position, just drag the programming icons onto the timeline. Mm -hmm. So it's very intuitive. Um, it uses the touch screen that you just drag the icons where you need them, and it's a lot less, um, a lot, you don't have to be a robot programmer necessarily to learn how to use it. But if I needed to be more of a robot programmer, you guys also offer that type of service as well to make sure that people are educated on the products you sell them. Is that correct? Yes, we do. Yeah, we offer training, um, we offer programming so we can make a custom program for you. And then if you need to make some adjustments later on, it's easy enough where that's something that you wouldn't have to always rely on us, but we're always there if you need our assistance. And then we can all be experts like you. Exactly. Uh, that, that's a long way to go. I know that you've been doing this for a while, extremely talented. Um, and, and this type of industry is just so exciting for me to get into. So I imagine uh, this is you know, something you love to talk about and love to be a part of as well. Exactly. Yeah. So what's the main difference between the robot we're standing at now and the robot we were looking at just a few minutes ago as far as why would I want one versus the other? Sure. So this is the Fanuc CRX robot. Um, it has this drag and drop touchscreen interface. It only needs 120 volts power, um, and, but this has a 10 kilogram payload, whereas that robot right there has a 15 kilogram payload, so it can handle a little bit heavier parts. Um, this robot is a little bit easier to use and program. Um, what you see here, these are electric grippers from OnRobot. Okay. And so they make some pretty cool flexible grippers and they have a, a really nice quick change mounting system so that you can swap between three finger grippers, two finger grippers, vacuum grippers. Um, the, they have a, a big range of products available that all fit their mounting system. So it makes it very easy and flexible to use. Flexibility, flexibility, being able to adapt to, to current conditions. Mm -hmm. And you pop that off really easy. Can I pop on the next thing just as easy? Exactly. Wow, yep. that's impressive. I, I, I'm very used to the quick change vice type of thing, right? I've done a lot of work in the, in the milling world. Mm -hmm. And to see how easily you switch that out, yeah. that's beautiful. So you could be running this system on a lathe with a three finger gripper one day. The next day, move it to a mill, put the two finger gripper on and everything just wheels right into place. Touch up a couple points on the, the new machine and you're good to go. Jake, so 
when we're talking about this robot and we talk about the previous one, I noticed there's a difference between the two carts. This one looks a, a bit more mobile, like when you popped up those wheels to move it around. What else is unique about it? So this is our pegboard fixturing. You can place standard dowel pins in these holes and fix your different part geometries uh, depending on where you put, place those dowel pins. So it's very flexible and you can um, utilizing the same pegboard, just putting the, the pins in different positions, you can create custom grids for different part geometries. And in addition to that, um, it's mounted on this mobile cart so that it easily detaches. And you could also move it to a, another side. You can say, use one cart on this side, one cart on this side. So it's, it's designed to be very flexible um, so that you're not always stuck with the same fixturing. And in addition to that, you could just have this robot on the base with no cart and design your own fixturing. So it's designed to be work in a variety of different applications. Jake, I know this is going to sound redundant to our audience, but I have to say it again, and you briefly went over it as well, flexibility. This is exactly. amazing. So the, the robot we were looking at previous, you can machine different boards for different size parts, but mm -hmm. this one is just a pegboard. You can, exactly. while in-house, just change it however you feel. And with that cart being mobile, switching side to side, I, I don't think we can say it enough how, how flexible this situation is and how easy it is to adapt to somebody's current situation. Mm -hmm. And I know we've been talking about machine tending a lot, but this system, because you can put whatever fixturing you want on there, it can do a variety of diff different applications like deburring, uh, robotic welding, palletizing, so it's really not limited because you can put whatever type of peripheral equipment around the outside of it. So it can fit a variety of different applications. So Jake, we've talked about how flexible this machine is, obviously, and how easy it is to learn, obviously, but when we're talking about how quickly we can get an ROI on something like this, do we have a number? Sure, so a lot of our customers are finding that the return on investment is around six to 12 months if they're running two shifts. Um, and then if they're running three shifts, it can be even faster than that. Wow, that's, that's, that's really incredible. I enjoy learning how easily these things can be adapted to an existing workshop. I think it's important for people to understand that even though we're comfortable, you know, in our comfort zone, as they say, doing the machining that we're doing now, you can easily bring one of these in. You can easily learn how it's utilized, how to program it, how to set it up, even switch out parts if necessary, if you're more of a job shop type of environment. Exactly. Jake, I really appreciate you explaining this to me because I think it's important for people to understand how easily they can put this in their shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. And, and one last thing I want to discuss is you've said the word FANUC a couple of times. Are yes. you exclusive with those guys? Yes, we are. Oh, that's a great robot, a great company to work with. Exactly. Awesome. Well, <clears throat> if somebody wants to learn more about these machines and Aceta in general, where can they best find you guys? Um, so we're on the internet, um, aceta.com. We have a lot of videos of our robots in action. Yeah, they can also find us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, or by calling 844 4 uh, Beautiful. Well, I appreciate you being uh, with us today at MTD, and thank you for teaching me so much about these robots, Jake. No problem.